In the first stage of our discovery and classification process, we listen to the network traffic to understand how sensitive data is flowing across your organization. This enables us to understand the repositories that may or may not contain sensitive PII data. It also enables us to build out this network topology of all of these repositories as well. In the second stage of our discovery and classification process, we start to build out our data catalog for a list of repositories that we want to scan to locate PII or PCI information. You can see that we support a variety of different data repositories out of the box, and we can also connect natively to these repositories, leading to an agentless approach. We also bring forward the concept of a root data asset, or a single source of truth, which enables us to not only train our machine learning algorithms, but also reduce the false positives to ensure that sensitive data is associated to the correct data subjects. As our secure DPS discovery and classification process starts to associate found PII data to unique data subjects, we start to build out these data assets. And these data assets allow us to give business context to the information that we're finding, such as Customers USA, where we can even drill down into the different repository types, the different products and file types that contain this USA customer data. I can even understand the exact databases that contain this USA customer data as well. If I was just to select the CSV file type here, we'd also be able to understand the exact PII information that we're storing in this particular file. As I select one of these, I'd be able to understand the different information that I store here, such as the contact information, the policy insurance information, and so on. In the last stage of our secure DPS discovery and classification process, we can start to respond to any data subject access requests that we may receive, such as from John Smith, for example, who has requested a full list of the PII and the PCI information that we store about him across the organization, such as his different contact information, government IDs, and so on and so forth. But that's not all, because we can also start to understand the data lineage, and in particular, how we've been sharing John Smith's data across the organization. We can also start to understand the different file shares that contain John Smith's data, and also the different databases as well. 